Hi guys, uh, today I'm going to be doing a video on how to use the uh, 570 MS calculator to perform factorization. Okay, now um, when we say factorization, I'm talking about say you are given um, x squared plus 6x and then minus 27. Okay, now of course, when we factorize, what we would get is we would expect to get two brackets, okay, two brackets. So how do we use the calculator to perform this factorization? Okay, so first we will need to press the uh, mode button, <clears throat> but I have to press this mode button three times. Okay, so I press one, two, three, and then you'll get EQN, where there's the number one below that. So I go ahead and press one, and uh, we're going to ignore the unknowns here, so we're going to press the right arrow right here, okay? And that will show now degree. So the degree will be 2 because the power number is 2. So go ahead and tap 2. So we have A, okay? Now this is because every quadratic equation comes with A, B, and C, okay? Because the general form is AX squared plus BX plus C. Right? So A is basically the number in front of the x square, but right now in this equation I've got no number. Well, that simply means the number here is actually 1. Okay, So this number is 1. Um, the B number here is positive 6. The C number is negative 27. So let's tap those numbers into the calculator. So A number is 1, so then press equal. B number is 6, again equal. C number is negative, don't forget negative, and then 27. And then go ahead and tap equal. Alright, so what the calculator does is it gives us two values. So you can see x1 is equal to 3. So I'm going to go ahead and write there x1 equal to 3. And if I tap equal to again, now we get x2. So I'm going to write that down, x2 equal to negative 9. So what this means is that these two values are the answers for x, but we want to factorize, which means we want them to be in the bracket. So think of it this way. When the number is a positive number, if I take that number and I place it back into the bracket, it becomes the opposite. In other words, instead of x3, I'm going to write in the bracket x minus 3. That's one factor. And this is negative 9. So instead of negative 9, I'm going to go ahead and write x plus 9. Okay, so those are the two factors in the brackets. And 3, negative 9, those are the answers. Okay, that's 1. However, um, we may encounter some questions where we may only have one bracket or the possibility of getting the x numbers as fractions. So let's have a look at a different question. Okay. Now let's say now uh, you're given x squared minus 8x and then plus 16. Okay. So same process. Uh, I do not need to repeat the calculator steps again. I just press AC to go back to A. So can you see A number here is 1, B number is negative 8 and C number is 16. So I'm going to go ahead with 1 for A, press equal. B is negative 8, so negative 8, and then equal. C number here is 16, so 1, 6, and equal. Alright, now notice this time, we only have the display showing us x equal to 4. Not x1, not x2. So what this means is that we have got two values actually, and they are both the same, so x equal to 4. Now, of course, when we factorize, we expect to get two factors, or in other words, two brackets, okay? But because we have got x equal to 4, this means that both numbers in these two brackets will be the same. So, 4, in the bracket, I'm going to write x minus 4, and that is also x minus 4. See how that works, okay? So, two same brackets, because you've got equal roots or equal answers. All right, that's good. Now, say we have fraction. Let's say the calculator gives us a fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the third question now. So now you're given 6x squared plus 17x plus 5. Okay? So of course, we expect to get two brackets 
when we perform the factorization. So again, to remind you, A is 6, B 17, C number is 5. Okay, now again, I just tap AC to go back to A. So I type 6 equal B 17, so 1, 7 equal C number is 5, that's 5 there, and equal. Right, now it seems a bit odd because you've got a uh, long recurring decimal, but it's okay. I just tap um, Shift ABC, that button right here. Notice how it changes to negative 1 over 3. So it's a fraction, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and write x1, okay, x1 equal to negative 1 over 3, and I hit equal again, and I get negative 2.5. So once again, I'm going to tap shift and ABC. So shift and ABC, notice I get an improper fraction. So x equal to negative 5 over 2, okay? Now, of course, we already know that uh, if you have numbers, I just place those numbers in, and the uh, values become the exact opposite. But right now, I've got a fraction. Um, no problem. Notice how your denominator here is 3, yeah? So I'm just going to go ahead and write 3x following the denominator number. Um, on top here, I've got negative 1 for the numerator, which means I write plus 1. Got that? Okay. Second number for x2 over here. This denominator number is 2, so which means in the bracket, I'm going to write 2x. Once again, that's a negative 5, so I'm going to write plus 5. Okay. Now, in case if you're a bit confused, if this happens to be a positive number, then in the bracket, I'm going to write negative 5. All right. Okay. Now, um, there will be some instances where we cannot perform factorization, and how will we know that? Okay, let's have a look at this equation now. 4x squared minus 13x and plus 17. Okay. Now, obviously, I would expect to get two brackets. Okay. So once again, we're going to key in A number, the B number, and the C number. So hit AC, go back to A. So this time, A number here is 4. So 4, don't forget equal. B number now is negative 13. So negative 1, 3 equal. C number is 17. So 1, 7, and then equal. Okay. Now, obviously, we have got x1, but if you take a closer look, you see that? That symbol here indicates that we have an imaginary number. What it means is that this expression, or this quadratic expression, cannot be factorized. Therefore, we do not have any factors. So if any time your calculator gives you this, it means we have got no factors. Okay? All right, now I'm also going to do uh, this next part where we're going to perform simultaneous solutions since we are using this 570 MS calculator. Now, suppose we have this simultaneous equation given to us, 5m plus 3n equals 7 and m minus 6n equals 8. Okay. Now, obviously, when you do your exam questions, you will need to uh, show the working, but I'm just going to show you, how, show you guys how you can use a calculator to check your answers. Okay. So I'm going to hit mode again three times. So one, two, three, same thing, EQN, that's one. But this time, we're gonna go, we are going to go with unknowns. So unknowns will be two because I've got M and N. They are, these are two unknowns. So two, right? Notice how we have got A1. Okay, that's because the first row or the first equation, that means we have got A1, that's B1, and that's C1. In other words, A1 is 5, B1 is 3, C1 is 7, and likewise, I've got A2 for the second row, B2, and C2 for the second row. In other words, the A2 number here is, of course, by default, it should be 1. B2 number is negative 6, and C2 number is 8. Just bear in mind that uh, we put the numbers on the right hand side, whereas the numbers with the unknown, we put them on the left hand side. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, type in A1, that's 5, equal, B1 is 3, so 3, equal, C1 is 7, so that's 7, equal, um, A2 number is 1, equal, B2 number is negative 6, so negative 6, equal, um, and then C2 number is 8, so 8 and equal. Now, obviously, the calculator is programmed to only give us the answer in terms of X and Y. So here, the X actually tells us that it's M. 
because our equation begins with m and then we have n. So this means m equals 2. If I go ahead and type equal again, now I get negative 1. So the second value is for n, n is equal to negative 1. Okay, got it? Alright guys, I hope you guys can understand how to use this calculator. Now of course I'll do more videos on how to use other features and functions in this calculator um, to help you guys with your exams. Alright, so until then, ta-ta, bye-bye.